This is Sean Crystal. Catch the Ink Pulp Podcast on Farside TV, Wednesdays at noon Pacific Time, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Come hang. Peace. Yo, the price of games rise up, stand the price, the loss of legs. My occupation, in essence, not complacent. Block the banquets, stop the computation. I'ma make the coda, fools just wanna make the quota. They can't rock around here, they need bacon soda. This a hydra, no way they taking over. Lay them below the basement with snakes and cobras. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. Welcome back to the Ink Pulp Podcast. Get my chair straightened. Uh, today, focus. We're uh, tackling part four, or the fourth type of panel transition. We have covered uh, moment to moment. We have covered um, subject to subject. We have covered action to action. And now we're going to cover scene to scene. So subject to subject worked because we stayed within a scene, and that's most every time. So what we're doing now is we're dealing with multiple scenes. So, like I said, today we are going to cover scene to scene. Okay? This one's fairly easy in concept. You're going from one scene to another scene. And what your job as the artist to do is make sure that the reader understands the location, understands where this scene is. I mean, you could be dealing with something as as easy and um, identifiable as the Statue of Liberty to the White House. And those are great very easy landmarks to say New York to Washington. Um, we could be dealing with something a little more ambiguous, uh, like let's say we're going from a rich person's house to a poor person's house. Stuff like that. Those are all scene to scene. So let's let's demonstrate while, while we're here. Um, so let's do, and, and scene to scene I think works Great. The same way I did moment to moment and action to action. Uh, well, let's say moment to moment and scene to scene. I think work best when the panel sizes are the same. So it keeps the focus on what's changing within the panel rather than the change of the panel itself. If, if that's uh, making any sense to you. So let's start one scene here. All right, so all I'm doing now is I'm saying we are dealing with the ancient pyramids of Egypt. All right, and of course you can have like some desert behind it if you need to, if you wanna put something else in the mix, sure. Like that, build a little depth in the equation, maybe could have done a better job with the perspective on that. We'll pretend I did a good job to begin with. And then of course you can have like in the foreground, you know, maybe there's someone, uh, all right, so forget the sun. You know, they wear those like dress things in Egypt. So let's just say we have this person walking into the scene. I'm gonna get the sun back in there, we'll put it up here. 
All right, so here we've got Egypt. And then let's say the next panel is um, uh, Paris. All right, I think scene to scene works great when you kind of repeat compositions and panel shapes. So you could easily have like the Eiffel Tower here. It's a terrible Eiffel Tower, but you get the dris, the gist, and you can have some Parisian buildings near it. And maybe it's nighttime. Change in time is, is cool too. I mean, maybe the story requires it, maybe it doesn't, maybe it needs to be the same time. But you could have the same sort of thing with a figure walking in to the scene. That is probably the most crude looking Paris <laughs> ever drawn. But in this case, we're dealing with a Parisian. So maybe not the Egyptian looking wear. Okay, it's generally the idea of scene to scene. Um, and, and that deals with landmarks and location. Um, but put this to work. Think about things like, like these are obvious and easy ones to do. Egypt and Paris. I mean, you just pick a landmark and you go in. But what happens when you need to do um, a scene like that's, you know, interior shots? They don't always have to be exterior shots where you're going from a hospital room where there's a patient um, cutting to a, a, uh, an office. And what are you going to do as the artist to make each room understood for what they are? Again, repeating panel sizes, repeating compositions are all great tools of help. Of course, just throwing things out there, things that just come to mind. And this is, do your research. That's where I'm going with this. I mean, this is all off the top of my head, but if I really was going to do this for, uh, like I had a book to work on, I had a job to take care of, I would do some research. And, and I mean, I, I'd make sure I get a, a better um, understanding of what I'm drawing, and it might give me some more ideas. Um, but so, you know, coming off the top of my head, hospital room, you're going to have a, a monitor hooked up to a patient, maybe an IV drip. Um, it's going to be a very sterile room, not a lot of decor, maybe a window, maybe a TV, and that's about it. Versus the office, you might have, you know, depending on, maybe it's an executive office. So the story matters. Maybe it's not an executive office. Maybe it is. And in an executive office, mahogany desk, paperweights, maybe a, a nice little decanter with some scotch in it, um, a window with a beautiful view of the city, um, much more decor, interesting lamps. I mean, I, I do the research and find, like, what would be a fun lamp to draw that says Manhattan executive or a well-designed lamp? What about art on the walls? Um, stuff like that. So just things to think about. This is all falling under the umbrella of scene to scene. So um, it's a fairly easy one to comprehend, I think. Uh, whereas subject to subject, I think, was a little trickier. Uh, next up is aspect to aspect. And that, that one... Um, that one's a little little trickier in and of itself, too. So if you're enjoying these little lessons, these are just very quick very easy to understand snippets into the larger lessons that I offer on inkpulpinstruction.com. Link in the description. So, sure, I've got this is, these are all, these lessons, these panel to panel transitions are all embedded in the episode called Foundational Storytelling. But I'm covering a whole range of topics and subjects. I have guest artists coming in doing the same thing. So come on over to Ink Pulp Instruction and you can dive deeper into your studies. Uh, I've got two subscription plans now. One is called The Lessons where you pay a monthly fee uh, and you get access to any and every episode of Ink Pulp Instruction. You can watch it as much as you want, uh, as many times over and over as you want anywhere you want as long as you have a device that will give you access to the platform. 
Um, and then I also have another subscription that's sort of uh, offered in conjunction with the lessons, but this subscription is called The Classroom, and it's a virtual classroom space where uh, I'm available as a teacher to you. I have ch weekly challenges I'm going to be putting up on there, uh, guest artists, I'll be doing live shows, I'll have guest artists come in, we'll give little lessons that way, um, I'll offer... Um, areas for people to post their work and get feedback from me and the community and there's just a lot going on in the classroom and i think like the lessons are great and the the uh, classroom is great they're very supplemental to each other and if you can get both you're going to build on a in uh, uh, a great learning experience at a very good price and it's if you're in art school it's going to really complement what you're doing if you're not you're saving a ton of money just by coming over to Ink Pulp Instruction. So hopefully I'll see you over there. If not, enjoy these lessons for free on the Ink Pulp podcast. And I'll be back next episode with another uh, panel transition. Peace. This is the Ink Pulp podcast. This is the Ink Pulp podcast. Comics, hip hop, life.